food. We need it to survive and give our body energy. But what about if you had to travel across an area on foot that had no food supplies? How could you carry all the food that you would need for that journey while still keeping it contained, organized, and protected from moisture and dirt for at least long enough for you to eat it? Well, these days we might use something like a sandwich bag or other plastic packaging. What did people do before plastic was invented? Is there anything you can just find in nature that's already bag shaped that you can put food into? Hmm. Stomach? Anyone? No? Hi folks, Tom from Van Dabby Dozy. Thanks for tuning in. So back in June of last year, I did a four day expedition across the Highlands using only the food, clothing and equipment of a 17th century Highlander. Now, prior to this expedition, I've researched with different ways of carrying food using materials that would have been available to the average person of that time period. And in previous trips, I've tried things like linen cloth rags, cloth bags, and leather pouches. But when I was visiting Peter Annanen to film my hide tanning video, we discussed how animal stomachs were often used to carry food. So things like animal stomachs, intestines, and bladders have, have long been used all around the world to make things like sausages, blood pudding, and of course, famous to Scotland, is the haggis, which is basically sheep organs, oatmeal, and spices chopped up finely and shoved inside the stomach. Now for foods like these, the organ is either part of the meal or is a sort of disposable packaging for the food. And unless it's salted or cured, you know, it's still just a raw organ so it's likely going to rot or go off unless it's kept cool. Now, when I was talking to Peter, we were wondering whether there was a way that you could tan and treat the stomachs to make a more durable container, basically a food pouch that you could use multiple times that would be lighter weight and faster and easier to make from scratch compared to something like a leather pouch. Now, we couldn't find any historical examples of people tanning stomachs in Scotland, but in the spirit of experimental archaeology, we figured we'd get some cow stomachs and give it a go ourselves. So with the help from Peter and my work experience student Jason, we got a bunch of cow stomachs and experimented with different methods of tanning and treating them. And from that, I made five different food containers that I took with me on my expedition. And 10 months since making them, they're still going. Now we got a lot of questions about these, so I figured I'd make a video sharing how we made them and the different end results for the different treatments that we tried. I'll also briefly discuss the wax linen wraps that I also used and also discuss the pros and cons of these more historical ways of wrapping food compared to modern day plastic packaging. But first of all, I know talking about oak tanned animal organs to carry your food is going to raise questions about hygiene and food safety. Now we first need to remember that in the past, generally there was a much lower standard of hygiene than there is nowadays. And you know, germ theory only really came about with the invention of the microscope, which is relatively recent. Now I made these, I knew exactly what went into them. So I felt okay, you know, carrying and eating my food from them, at least for the duration of my expedition. But I can't say they're hundred percent food safe. You would have to do some lab studies for that, but um, make up your own mind if you wanna try these out for yourself. So how did we make these? Now, obviously to get your hands on an animal stomach, you first have to slaughter and butcher the animal, which would have been a really normal, almost everyday occurrence for people in the past. And in the case of a cow, it has four stomachs. So you get four food containers from one animal. Now these days it's, it's not so easy to just come across a butchering process. So we bought these from the local butcher who sells them uh, for people to make haggis from. And they sell them already clean and preserved in a food safe brine. So, that's what we started with. We first washed our stomachs to get rid of any of the pickle solution and picked off any excess fat as this will stop the tanning solution impregnating the skin of the stomach. Then for four of the stomachs, we filled them up and let them soak in a strong oak bark tanning solution for about 48 hours. But as an experiment for one of the stomachs, we blew it up like a balloon and let it dry first before rubbing in the tanning solution. And it turned out surprisingly different the stomachs left to soak in the tanning solution turned out thicker and more durable, more like leather, when the one that was left to dry first 
is much thinner, almost transparent, and it's almost like baking paper, and it's quite easy to tear. So I took these stomachs home and stuck them full of newspaper and let them dry out. Now, if I had just left them like these, they would be a bit brittle and not very water resistant. So I needed to treat them with some sort of fat or oil. So I experimented with some different ones to see what happened. For one, I rubbed in flaxseed oil, another melted lard, and for the other three, I used beef suet. I then cut them to the size of the food container I wanted, sewed up any holes or open ends, and also sewed a strip of leather on one seam using wax linen thread so I could close the pouches by rolling the seam and tying the leather cord. Now the thin dried stomach was too delicate for this, so I just sewed in a small wooden toggle with a length of linen thread that you could use to wind and bind your package closed. So how did they turn out? Well, I reckon this one turned out the best, which was one of the stomachs left to soak in the tannic solution. And then this one was treated with flaxseed oil. Now the great thing about flaxseed oil is that it soaks in and then it hardens. So it made a very durable kind of leathery bag um, that isn't greasy because it dries. Now flax was a crop in Scotland, so it was available, but to extract the oil from it is quite labor intensive. So it might not be a realistic option for the average person. So my second favorite were the ones left to soak, but then treated with suet. Now suet is the fat that is found around the kidneys of a cow, and it's got a really long shelf life. So these will probably last the longest, but they're quite greasy. They're still quite greasy. So not that pleasant to have your food in. Next one I would say was this one that was treated with lard. Now lard is often the fat coming from pigs. Um, it's much cheaper and easier to get, but it doesn't have as long a shelf life as suet and it's also very greasy. My least favorite of them is the one that we dried first purely because it's just very delicate. It's, it's very like uh, parchment paper. Uh, I tried to make this into a pouch but it tore, uh, tore down the center so that's why I had to turn it into a wrap. Um, but still really interesting. It's interesting how it turned into something quite different. So if you want to see what type of food I carried in these pouches, I recommend checking out my expedition video after this, if you haven't seen it already. And in that video, you also see me using these wax linen wraps to carry my bannock breads and oat cakes in. Now you can learn how to make these wraps, just, just Google it, there's lots of stuff online about it. Both the wraps and the cow stomachs worked great as food pouches. You know, they kept everything organized, contained, stopped it spilling in my bag. And most importantly, it kept the food dry which was great, especially after that, that first day of, of torrential rain. So what are the pros and cons of these historical ways of carrying food, such as these cow stomach pouches? Are they historically realistic? And can we compare them to plastic? Well, if we put our, our minds into that of our ancestors, where you know butchering a cow is a pretty normal thing, people would have used every part of the animal, and the stomach, you know, it's just a convenient natural bag just there ready to use. You can just cut it out, empty its contents, quickly wash it in the stream, put your cuts of meat in it, and there you go, there's a bag to carry your food with you. Now how long that raw stomach lasts depends on lots of things. Would people put in the effort to tan the stomach to make a more long-term pouch? We just don't know. Now to me, it wouldn't be worth putting in the effort to make these unless the tanning solution was already made up, which you know, most villages would have had a specialist tanner with the solution ready, you know, tanning skins anyway. So if you could just go chuck your raw stomach into the solution, then it's quite easy to make. Even though some of you might be questioning their hygiene, they're still much more hygienic than a raw stomach as the tanning solution is an antibacterial and the fats stop it from getting wet and going raw again. You can also rinse these out in routine uses with cold water. Now, were they made and used by the average person? Probably not, but to me, if I was a traveler back then, if I had to carry food that had to be kept dry for it to last, something like smoked or salted meat, to me, it'd be worth making these. So can we compare these with modern day plastic packaging? Now, obviously, for most of us these days, the plastic is the most convenient and hygienic option. But the most obvious downside to me is that this isn't biodegradable, where this is. 
And with the obvious environmental impact aside, from a tactical leave no trace stealth side of things, if I accidentally drop this, it's really obvious that a human has been here and this is gonna sit around for hundreds of years and not break down. If I accidentally drop this, you can barely see it. And you know, once the rain has washed out the fat and tanning solution, it's gonna rot and go back to the soil. Also, it might just be a small thing, but the stomachs are much quieter when you open and close them compared to the plastic. And to me, there's nothing worse when you're just enjoying the, the silence of nature. Maybe you're trying to be stealthy and then But maybe that's just me. Now, I'm not saying that we should all start using cow stomachs instead of plastic. That's not realistic. Just something to think about. So I recommend checking out my expedition and hide tanning video if you haven't seen that already. If you want some monthly extra content, consider becoming a Patreon and the money helps keep the channel going. You can find links to my social media and ways of supporting the channel in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support folks. I'll be back with another video next month. See you then. Cheers.